Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and welcome back to Brandy Funeral Source Code channel. This is episode 8 of the Vue.js tutorial series and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Slint for your Vue.js projects. If you don't know what Slint is, it's a linting utility for JavaScript. So a linter basically checks your code and sees whether you're doing things wrong. And some things that you could be doing wrong is not using semicolons for instance if that is one of the rules you enforce. So when you forget a semicolon once or twice, uh, JavaScript won't scream at you, it's all fine. But if you want a good style guide and you want your code to be the same throughout the entire project, you should enforce strict rules. So Slint basically checks all this stuff for you so you don't have to do it manually. And it, it's really easy to set up, especially with Vue. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is want to say Vue init webpack inside the terminal. And we can actually install uh, Slint right from where we initialize our project. So we just want to say current directory and then we want to give it the name view or something similar. We have a problem downloading the thing. Let's try again. Please say it works this time. Ah, there we go. Okay, then just name it view or something like that. Say yes, yes, yes. Use runtime plus compiler no view router and then we can say use Slint to lint your code and we can say yes so we have a couple of options here we can use standard Airbnb and none so standard Airbnb are the most common used Slint rules uh, in general right now and standard is a uh, rule set that just enforces a couple of standard rules so for instance, you need to use two spaces for indentation, single quotes for strings, uh, no unused variables. Airbnb also made a uh, Slint rule set and it's really good. I highly advise you to use this one over the standard one. And they actually provide a really good description for everything that they say. So for instance, use const for all your references, you avoid using far and everything they say, it's all explained right here. So right now I'm going to select Airbnb. If you want, you can also configure your own, which you can do by selecting none, but let's just stick to Airbnb right now. We can say set up no unit test and no end-to-end -end tests. We want to use uh, NPM and it will just install everything and it will also install Slint for us right away. So we don't have to do anything else, it will just install. All right, so I just finished downloading everything and when we open the project, we can see that there are two more files than we had in previous projects. So we have an islintrc.js and a .slintignore file. So the islintrc.js file is basically a JavaScript file which exports everything that we want for our rules. And in this case, we use a couple of plugins. So we used a few plugin and we extend the Airbnb base, which is the rules that we will be using. And then it also defines a couple of custom rules. And then we have a Slint ignore file, which will basically tell uh, Slint which files it should not check. So how do we actually check our files? How do we know what is wrong and what is right? So what we can just do is go to the terminal, say npm run lint, and it will go through all our few files and it will check, are they properly written? So you run that and nothing happens. And that is because everything is all right. So when we go to our app.view, we can see that there is no errors. And I actually installed a linter plugin for Atom, 
which allows me to see Eslint uh, errors right away. One error that these rules set is that you don't want to include any extensions for, for instance, importing a view component. So we say dot slash component slash hello world dot view, which is an existing file. It will say that unexpected use of file extension view for dot slash component slash hello world dot view import slash extensions. And that basically means that it doesn't want us to use an extension. So we can remove that and everything is all right. So another issue it will give is if we miss a comma at the end of an array or an object, and it will say missing trailing comma. We can actually say fix right away and it will put them back. And on the Airbnb style guide, it's all explained why this is done. So for instance, for the commas, when you add a new line, so we can say hello right here, it will only change one line because we don't need to add another comma. If you had to add a comma right here, it would change an extra line in Git and that could cause some confusion. So in general, these rules are really basic. They overall improve your code quality. So the Airbnb style guide also uses an import plugin, which checks whether your import statements are correct. So what would happen if we delete hello world.view? We delete it and it's gone. But now we're importing a file which doesn't exist anymore. So what it actually will say is, Enable to resolve path to module dot slash components slash hello world. So without actually running your code, without actually gaining any errors, we can already see that something isn't right here. We're doing something which can't be done because this file doesn't exist. So just beforehand anything happens, we already know that this won't work and we can remove this line for instance, and then we can see that something is wrong right here. Hello world is not defined no undefined. So we can remove that line as well. In general, I advise you to use a linter. It's really good for projects. It enforces some strict rules on what you can and cannot do. If you use the same syntax throughout your entire project, you don't make any mistakes and everything just looks the same. It's a lot easier to work on, especially if you work with multiple people. It's just easy to mix different styles together and it will become a big mess basically. And using a linter, you basically enforce, this is what you need to do. If you don't do it like this, you're doing it wrong. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.